everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Patrick Alban from the SPMI podcast. And today we're going to discuss a very important topic. It's a topic that many athletes I've worked with have, you know, seek services for, um, struggled with in, in many different sports. Um, I work with over 70 different sports. I would say at least 25 or 30 of those are sports that uh, we find this prevalent in with many athletes. And the topic that I want to discuss today has to do with tolerance to pain. Now, I'm not talking about tolerance to pain from a physical standpoint. Of course, we want to listen to our body. Right? We definitely want to respect any type of injury or any type of serious pain and, of course, seek professional medical attention and help and expertise in that field. So today, I actually want to speak about the emotional struggles of physical pain. This is a really important topic because a lot of times we'll see athletes that will fail to reach their full potential, not because of the physical pain, but because of the emotional fears of the physical pain. Um, You know, a lot of times what happens with athletes is that we have a negative relationship with pain in the sense that athletes will anticipate just how bad that pain will be. And as a result, the fear sets in, the negative thoughts follow, and as a result, many athletes are in this constant battle with their mind before the significant pain even comes. So I really want to talk about that. Um, You know, we're not talking necessarily about removing pain, right? The pain is physical, um, but we are talking about improving the mental strength in order to endure pain better in sports. So Let's talk about several topics here. First, I want to highlight um, on a side note one area that I do work with athletes in called meditation. And meditation is a very powerful skill, has a lot of benefits, but one of the benefits of meditation is the ability to, in a way, become more desensitized with pain. Now, I say that very lightly because for most people, they are not necessarily able to do that with meditation alone. And the novice most likely will not be able to do this uh, with just a few practices. This is for experts, for professionals who have really engaged in meditation for long periods of time. Um, But we've seen specifically studies among yogis, and I know this is the extreme, this is like the all-star, the top of the top of any athlete in any sport. But when we look at Tibetan yogis, we see that in studies, it's remarkable what happens with the relationship with pain because of how strong their mind is, because of the dedication that they place towards meditation. So one visual example, and try to imagine this uh, that I'm talking about, would be what's called an inverted V. So not even an inverted U, but an inverted V, that means a backwards V. And what studies have shown with yogis in particular is when we see their relationship with pain before pain, Okay, before pain, the average person already shows signs of anticipation of pain. So you see the anxiety levels are increasing, the stress hormones are already being produced, and they're feeling this onset, right? They're preparing for pain. For someone at a level that has practiced lots of meditation and has really created this incredible relationship with pain, they actually show no signs of that. There's zero increase in anxiety or tension or physical and physiological response there. So we see this inverted V where right before the pain, there's absolutely nothing. Now, during the pain, it spikes up. So they do feel a lot of pain. In fact, we see that with uh, professional high-level world-class meditators, they actually, in some cases, feel more pain. But here's what's amazing. As soon as the pain is gone, the anxiety response immediately drops. It goes to practically nothing. So it looks like that backwards V. And with an athlete or just an individual who does not have this level of expertise, you'll see that the pain response, the emotional struggle is still very high. So what I want to talk about is how do we get better at that? Uh, What are some ways of helping athletes to overcome this struggle of the emotional fears of physical pain? And, And I want to talk specifically about one sport that I have worked with uh, from time to time, I would regard these athletes as one of the most mentally tough athletes, One definitely one of the most mentally tough sports that I've worked with. And the sport I'm specifically talking about are triathletes and even more specifically uh, Ironman athletes. 
Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar about Ironmans, Ironman is a triathlon. It includes three events, but it is a more intense triathlon. So to give you a little idea, the Ironman starts with uh, the first stage or the first event, which is the swim, and that consists of 2.4 miles. And this isn't in a pool. This is in the ocean. So imagine 2.4 mile swim in the ocean with many, many competitors all chasing the same goal. Now, right after the 2.4 mile swim, there's then this very quick, very quick transition into the bike. And it's the second part of the race. The second part of the race is on a bike, and this is for 112 miles. So imagine right after you get out of the ocean, now you have to go for a 112 mile bike race. Okay? And then after that, you then have one more stage, and that is the run. And the run consists of a full 26.2 marathon mile, right? 26.2 mile marathon. So you can only imagine, you know, what is the biggest fear, right? Now, these are athletes that are not just going out there and say, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to just go for an Ironman. I'm just going to compete in triathlon. No, they train for this, of course. But just imagine, in fact, take a moment to think about yourself in training for this sport and training for this race and going through these events and really putting everything you have into it and think about what your biggest fear would be, or at least one of them. And for almost every triathlete I've ever worked with, their biggest fear is the pain. And it's not necessarily the physical components of pain. It's the fear of giving up or succumbing to the pain. So when I work with these triathletes, what we first discover is a lot of times they're struggling because they're doing everything they can to avoid the pain. They're trying to stay away from it. They're trying to trick themselves out of it. They're trying to not think about it. But as we know in psychology, a lot of times when we try to not do something, it has this paradoxical effect where it actually makes it occur even more. So what this means is that anxiety goes up more and they start to worry more and they feel even worse. And this is the ongoing struggle, especially in a sport like this. So one great example that I've discovered with my athletes that helps tremendously, and once again, it's not just about this particular sport, it can be used for many sports, is what type of mindset is required to overcome the emotional struggles of pain. Uh, so years ago, I was working with one triathlete who just made incredible improvements and strides. Um, and he was struggling with this uh, topic that we're talking about early on. And we changed the relationship completely with the fear of pain. And that's really the key part. It's not getting rid of it. It's changing the meaning that pain has with you going into these events. So, you know, first he was you know, talking about how much pain he felt, at what moments did he feel the most pain. I believe it was actually he was such a great athlete. He didn't start worrying about the pain until late in the run. But it was at those moments when the fear kicked in a lot. And in past events, that would end up costing him. He would just quit. And I'm not saying it was because he wasn't strong enough, but a lot of times it was. He would admit, he'd say, Patrick, I knew that I had more in the tank, especially after checking his data later on, looking at the Garmin and seeing that you know, he still didn't maximize a lot of his full potential. Um, so that was a, a big opening, uh, awareness opening point for him to understand, hey, I, I know I can do better with this mentally. So we worked on this and we wanted to understand what exactly constitutes a relationship that he has with pain. Like what, what is it that he fears about it? And the biggest fear about the pain wasn't necessarily just not finishing the race. It has to do with something far greater. With many athletes, we are afraid of things because we're afraid that we're going to lose something that we love so much. So, you know, this was a, a huge part of his life, a lot of sacrifices and just an incredible athlete, uh, very, very strong mentally, by the way. I mean, you have to be mentally strong in order to do this. But the mindset that shifted everything was going from trying to avoid pain to actually asking for more of it. I know that sounds really weird. Like, why would we ask for something like that, Patrick? Isn't that dangerous? Isn't it... Um, you know, just, just not the way to go because we're going to think about it more. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, it is dangerous if you don't listen to your body and you know that, hey, this is something that's real 
like an injury, then yes, of course. But a lot of times it's psychological. And when we say, give me more pain, well, the way that helped him was because now he was able to change a relationship of something that he feared so much. And then while combining that with actually facing it, it actually showed his mind that it's not dangerous. So this is what's so incredible. He goes to the race and he's like, okay, give me more pain. Give me more pain. Give me more pain. And at first, of course, it's like, you know, you're still afraid of the pain. But when you keep going through that, the body's trying to tell you or the mind is trying to tell you, hey, it's dangerous. But you keep pushing forward. You keep saying, no, give me more. And then what you find and what he found was that the anxiety that goes into anticipating pain goes away. Because now you're sending a message to the brain that, no, you're wrong. This is the right way to go. And in doing so, what he noticed is that he was able to detach from the pain in a way to where the anxiety wasn't there. Did he feel pain? Yes, he still felt pain. But imagine feeling pain, but yet there's no fear involved. So going back to even the yogi example with the inverted V, right? The example I, I mentioned about how they just feel the pain. What we know in studies is that when we take on this approach, pain actually becomes nothing more than a sensation albeit a very strong sensation, but just a sensation. If we look at anything else in life, right, because we're talking about the physical nature, but it really is the emotional, it's the attempt of avoidance that is the most painful emotionally. Because the body's natural tendency is to want to heal, means to face whatever our fears are. And when we go against that and we say, hey, let's stay away from it because we perceive it as a threat, the body cannot heal. So therefore, we still are, in a way, living through this emotional struggle. So it was incredible because this athlete, you know, he asked for more pain, in addition to a, another powerful technique that's on another topic that we worked on greatly, but he ended up placing out of over 3,000 competitors, I believe it was 85th, which is phenomenal. I mean, he broke his time by almost 15 minutes, which was very significant. Um, and it's just great strides. More than anything, of course, increased his confidence. He felt better about it and just changed his overall uh, relationship with pain. And, you know, we can think about how this applies in other sports, right? I work with a lot of gymnasts. Gymnasts are afraid of pain, too, and there is real danger there, of course. So, you know, if you have an injury, that's different. But you can see it also in sports like figure skating, extreme sports. Um, and that's one another amazing topic is the mindset that goes into it. When I work with athletes who are in extreme sports, like X Games, they have a different relationship with pain. It's this incredible acceptance that pain is just a part of the sport. It's going to happen. And it's inevitable that something's going to happen. So they stop trying to control the future about if it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. To them, it's going to happen, and they'd rather enjoy the moment. So their fear with pain is completely different. They, they don't have that same struggle with many sports. That's something that we can learn from with many X game sports, such as skateboarding, motocross, um, you know, freestyle, BMX biking, all those high risk sports. And if you really think about it, for them to get to that level, they had to develop that relationship because they're constantly facing that risk every single day to get better. So we see it with other sports and then, you know, we see it more in artistic sports where the fear necessarily may not be the pain, like the physical pain is kind of a sign to stay away, but really it's more an emotional pain of being afraid of failure. So going back to the example of uh, gymnastics or figure skating, they're afraid because it hurts if they fall. However, that pain kind of gives them more psychological reason of staying away from it because the emotional threat is bigger, but the pain is real. So they can say, hey, I don't want to compete because this could be bad, but in essence, they really don't want to compete because they're afraid of failure. So we want to change the overall relationship with it because when we do that, it's going to open up a lot more opportunities for you as athletes. Uh, other sports I've seen this in would be show jumping, right? That is a very, very challenging sport in the sense that there is a lot of risk and we don't want to anticipate the pain. If we anticipate the pain, that actually increases the likelihood of injury, increases the likelihood of an athlete hurting themselves, especially in that sport because the horse can 
feel the pain in a way, right? Every show jumper I've worked with, they explain to me how horses can feel how you feel. And show jumping, for those who don't know, it is jumping with a horse, equestrian riding, where the athletes are just, the riders are very, very afraid of, you know, how the horse feels. And if they feel bad, the horse is going to feel it too. So changing that relationship also improves that. If we look at other sports like motor sports, um, if I work with you know, karting or racing, it's the same thing. You know, many athletes, they are afraid of the crash and the crash is real danger. That's not just pain. That is real 100%. But if we anticipate it to the point where we feel nervous and anxious, that can increase the likelihood of an accident. And that's really dangerous. So we see it with all kinds of sports. Uh, another common sport I've seen it with is in baseball. You know, getting hit by a pitch, that's something that doesn't feel good. But um, you know, the fear of getting hit will increase the likelihood of you not doing well at the plate. right? Because you're looking out for that instead of being present one pitch at a time. You know, other sports that we can see it in, um, you know, boxing is another great example. I've worked with uh, quite a few boxers, MMA fighters. In that sport, it's a, it's a similar relationship that they have with pain as the X game athletes, right? The extreme sport athletes, because they understand that's the nature of the sport. So they go in with not necessarily a relationship that I love pain, Right? But it's more like, hey, pain's a part of it. So if you're going to compete just you know, in a way that would say suck it up and just go out there and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And we have to get to that in, in many sports. Uh, it's just going to be able to quiet the mind more for you as an athlete so that you can enjoy it and you can be free. Right? We don't want to be out there worrying the whole time. Now, I want to talk about one other part of overcoming pain that is very, very powerful. I would say it's one of the most powerful parts. Um, and maybe it's not for everyone. And, you know, I'm going to talk from a different standpoint, but I like to give my own examples sometimes. So I, um, about eight years ago, I was, uh, I needed my teeth worked on. It was probably about actually 10 years ago. And I went to a dentist, was not the best dentist by far, but I, you know, I need to get a lot of work done. So, you know, before braces, I had to get deep cleaning and all this stuff. And I went in and I was there and he says, okay, well, we're going to do all four quadrants there. We're going to clean every quadrant. So what that means is they're going to clean the upper right, the upper left, lower right, lower left. And we can do it all today. So I thought, okay, that's great because, you know, I really don't enjoy being at the dentist and it's just, um, it's great to get this over with. And the uh, dentist was uh, injecting, of course, anesthesia through the different quadrants. And at that time, I was anticipating pain. So let's just say even the needle didn't feel so good. Um, but he you know, proceeded to, uh, to inject the anesthesia through each quadrant. And as he made his way to the bottom quadrant, within seconds, I felt a rush in my heart rate. And um, the dentist there and the hygienist and the staff, they got very scared. And they looked at, um, you know, they looked at my hands and they touched them, my feet, and they're very cold. And my heart rate basically went from rest to 180 beats per minute. Um, so it was quite scary. So imagine the anticipation of pain in that moment and how dangerous that can be to your health. Right? So here I am, and you know, I knew that any type of panic could, could really make things um, at a very dangerous level, to say the least. Um, so one of the most important skills, and, and this is uh, more than a skill from where it comes from me, is to it, it's 100% faith. And I am a person of faith, and I don't, you know, I don't talk about that all the time. I, I may talk about some of my clients who are as well. But when we talk about that more specifically, that's a very powerful way of overcoming fear. So in that particular moment, I'm lying down and I feel my hands are numb. They're getting numb. My feet are numb. I see everyone just absolutely going crazy. They're asking me, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm um, just panicking. You know, the dentist said, I'm, I called rescue. They're on their way. At that point, I just turned to God and I said, look, I said, you know, I, I don't want to go right now. <laughs> I said, I, I really 
like where I'm going with my life right now. I don't want to go, but if it's your will, I'm okay with that. And at that moment, I went from being very scared to being at probably the most peace I've ever felt. So imagine being at that kind of peace in that moment. So rescue showed up. They um, told this dentist, actually they got very upset the dentist went off on him. They thought that you know, he gave me too much anesthesia, asked him what happened. The dentist said, oh no, it's because he's probably allergic to it. They rushed me to the ER, uh, and of course, in rescue. And then when I arrived, uh, my EKG was really bad. I uh, had palpitations, and I was there overnight. Even the next day, I still had some palpitations. So, you know, really what happened there is I discovered, you know, not discovered, but one of the skills is that faith is one of the top skills that can prevail fear, right? Because at the end of the day, when you have faith, you don't have to take on all that responsibility of trying to control the future and anticipating fear, right? You can give that responsibility to a higher power. So that was one thing that was tremendously helpful uh, to let you guys know what happened at the end. Well, I found out a year and a half later that um, the anesthesia was, I was not allergic to the anesthesia. I found out by an anesthesiologist that he injected a vein in my lower jaw. There's actually a, a vein that runs along the lower jaw, so I had no idea about that. So um, yeah, it was quite scary. But that is another very powerful skill and solution to the anticipation of pain, right? The fear of pain. So we're talking about first, you know, embracing it, right? Changing the meaning of it, but then also not taking on the responsibility that comes with it, right? You know, as I mentioned there, those are really the key components. And of course, as I mentioned the last one, you know, I, I don't judge anyone. Um, I just want to share my experience because it is a very powerful one. And when you have full acceptance, and we say full surrender of whatever it is you fear, that's when you can be at peace. So if you guys are feeling or worried about an upcoming competition, even you can say, hey, you know what, I surrender my fears. And now I can just go out there and be present. In other words, you stop trying to control the outcome or the future. So I hope that this was uh, another very helpful uh, podcast. Uh, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, if you listen to my other podcasts, I did start a new SPMI um, TV channel, YouTube channel. It's called SPMI TV. And please feel free to go there. Also subscribe. And you can check out a lot of really great content. So videos there on different mental skills, as well as ask questions there. That's one thing we can't do so much with a podcast. So ask questions at the bottom, and I'll be more than happy to answer them and possibly even you know, answer them on an upcoming podcast. Um, also, please check out the company website. This is listed in the bio of this podcast. So check that out. I have a really great program that I offer many athletes, and you can see all the testimonials. You can see all the success stories. There are a lot of them. And you can really understand what this program offers and how it suits your needs. This program is not just about improving uh, full potential and performance. It is really about becoming the full potential of yourself, but learning how to enjoy something that maybe right now you fear or that you worry about. I tell many of my athletes, and I'm sure you can relate to this, one of the worst feelings is training a lot and putting in all that time, putting in all that energy. And when you go to compete, you are a fraction of yourself, right? You're, you're not there and you know it. You're like, hey, I know I'm probably like 50% of my full potential. That's a very frustrating feeling. So in this program, we open up the, the doors and the ability for an athlete to really see like, okay, how far can I go? It's one of the most um, gratifying feelings. Like, you know what, I gave my all today. We can see how far this. For many athletes, that is very far. You see a lot of incredible breakthroughs. So you get a chance to understand that. Um, there are several services that this company offers. I'm going to touch on briefly. One is one-on-one. -on -one. That means um, athletes work individually. So we have sessions either in person or at this moment because of COVID. Uh, online and actually most of my athletes I do work with online. It's still face to face. Uh, it's still very involved, right? We're, we're sharing screens. You're still getting a lot of great information. You see everything there in front of you. It's very dynamic. Uh, the other option is through group training. 
So what that means is that athletes get in groups, we have small groups and we work together on different key topics. Um, and, and that's also really, really helpful and very effective. And then third is something that's coming out late in the year. And that is a incredible, very thorough, I'd say one of the most complete, if not the most complete mental toughness program, online program that I will be releasing for every athlete. It's going to be really incredible. So check those out. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please, of course, you may call company number, you may uh, email or as I mentioned, even the YouTube, check it out. And I look forward to bringing you a lot more information and until next time.